talk about Florida bass. Did you know that the TWRA stocks about 800,000 Florida bass in the reservoirs on the Tennessee River every year? It all started back in 1998 on Kentucky Lake and then in 2000 on Chickamauga. But all those big fish being caught, they're not Florida bass. As the genetic testing has become more sophisticated, we realize that just raising the percentage of Florida isn't what causes these high performing fish. It's those F1s, that first generation hybrid between a northern and a Florida yeah. bass. Nice fish. When you put two species together in certain situations, you get this advantageous, in this case, growth characteristic. Um, it's expressed after age four. You know, up to age four, the northerns and the F1s grow about the same rate, but beyond that, that's when you see these accelerated growth rates in the, the larger fish. Those F1s don't just magically appear. Once the Florida bass stocking starts, it takes time to see results. One thing that's surprising, especially with all the tournament fishing, is that there hasn't been a lot of migration out of Harmon Creek. So there's still all the rest of Kentucky for these fish to, to cross with the northerns and make the F1s. But, um, so we've got Kentucky, and of course, Chick has been going on for 19 years now. And in 2015, we, of course, went to the rest of Kentucky. We started Nick and Jack Watts Bar in Port Loudon. So pretty much all of the main stem Tennessee River impoundments are being stocked with Florida's right now. So it's, again, it's not that far to get to a place where, where you can find the, the F1s. Once we stock the Florida's, they have to have, um, you know, about three or four years minimum to grow to where they're old enough to spawn with the, the native fish. And then you're looking at another four years before you start seeing this growth diversion. So from the initial stocking the first year, you're looking at seven years before you see any benefit in these larger fish at a minimum. And it takes multiple years of stocking to get enough in there to, to actually have a significant impact on the, the F1 population. So that's why it takes so long. You know, it, it took us 10 years to understand what was going on in Chickamauga. One question we get all the time is why don't you stock Cordell Hall, why don't you stock Center Hill, Old Hickory? Well, biologists have their reasons and it's all based on research. Oklahoma started stocking Florida's about, what, two decades before we did. Um, they kind of put them all over the state and they noticed in some reservoirs they were successful, some they weren't. They had a biologist named Gene Gilliland and he was able to correlate it with an index of coldness called heating degree days. It's not actual mean temperatures. It actually gives more information about the distribution and the magnitude of cold days throughout the year. Um, and reservoirs north of this was 1900 heating degree days. The, the northern reservoirs just didn't perform. It's, they've changed the genetic structure. They didn't see diminished growth rates, but there was no improvement either. So they were putting money into something that didn't, didn't do anything. Now, in those systems, they can't go back and get native fish out because they've already introduced those, those alleles. So that was advantageous to us because we're about the same latitude and that 1900 heating degree day line runs through Tennessee. It starts around Dyersburg and kind of makes a curve through, through the state. And it includes most of the main stem Tennessee River reservoirs, but it excludes almost all of the Cumberland River. So that um, informed our decision to concentrate on the Tennessee River system and stay out of the Cumberland River. The water supply, the trips basically to uh, Old Hickory being Lake Cumberland, Del Hollow, uh, Center Hill, the uh, coming out of Center Hill, uh, the Caney and uh, the OB out of Del Hollow, but they're cold, they're all cold and that uh, main river channel is so cold it does it usually does not even uh, stratify during the summertime. It's usually just the same pretty much constant uh, cool temperature from top to bottom. We're putting the Floridas in the systems where they have the highest likelihood of being successful. So we have finite budgets and finite hatchery space. So it's in best interest that we put these fish in the main stem Tennessee reservoir impoundments because they're most likely going to have the most benefit there. You know, I, going back to the water temperature, uh, the minimum length limit for uh, largemouth bass on uh, Old Hickory is 14 inches, which is an inch less than 
most of our other systems, and there's a reason for that. It's because of the, uh, the growth of those fish is a little bit slower than uh, some of our other reservoirs, Thames Ford, Normandy, Kentucky, Chickamauga or so. So we even see that a little bit of that slower growth in those northerns that would perform better in cooler waters. The other issue that we're concerned about is just maintaining genetic integrity. By maintaining a whole watershed where we have the genetic integrity of our native fish, we always have those to refer back to if we need them. A couple thoughts here. You can't ignore research that says something's not going to work. And then there's the what ifs. What if you do ignore that research and you do it and it doesn't work? What if it has a detrimental effect on a fishery? It's something to think about because once you introduce Florida bass, there's no going back. The way I've been explaining it to people, if, if you take a beaker of red dye or a jar of red dye and say that's northern bass, and a jar of blue dye and say that's Florida bass, you mix, mix them together, you get purple, which would be your F1s, your back crosses and all that. So, you know, if you want to try to reverse that, you take some more red dye and pour it in there, you don't get red dye, you just get more purple dye with a little bit more red in it. So you can't remove that blue from the system. It's always going to be there and it's always going to persist. All this, these studies and take lots and lots of time to, to see through, you know, we're still, we're 20 years into Chickamauga almost, and we're still finding stuff out about it and learning from it. So we don't know what the, the end product looks like after, you know, 30 or 40 years. We're still waiting to see.